Milwaukee Archbishop Jerome Listecki has met with Pope Benedict several times. He says in a statement, quote, I always found the Pope Benedict to be quite the gracious and humble, despite being the pontiff and the greatest theologian of the century. May he now rest in peace. Fox's grave Palcott takes a look at the Pope's life and legacy. When John Paul II died after more than 25 years as Pope, and the Cardinals met to elect a successor, it took them just two days to give the job to a 78-year-old German, a scholarly man who didn't particularly appear to want it. The Lord Cardinals have elected me a simple, humble worker in God's vineyard. For decades, Colonel Joseph Ratzinger had been a key advisor to John Paul II on questions of Catholic doctrine earning a reputation as a staunch conservative. As Pope Benedict XVI, he battled relativism, the idea that what's true for one person might not be true for someone else. Pope Benedict's 2008 visit to the United States would be remembered not only for his birthday celebration in the White House, a stop at Ground Zero, and mass at Yankee Stadium, but also by the way in which he addressed the sex abuse crisis so directly. Exclude pedophiles from the sacred ministry. I, this is absolutely incompatible and who is really guilty and uh, to be a pedophile cannot be priest. Yet sex abuse would haunt his papacy as the scandal unfolded in Europe and critics charged that Benedict's record on abuse was mixed. And there were other problems as well. Benedict offended Muslims with a speech suggesting Islam could be a violent religion and sparked a global uproar when he lifted the excommunication for four renegade bishops, since one of them, Richard Williamson, turned out to be a Holocaust denier. Benedict wasn't a politician. The Pope was above all an intellectual and a priest, having discovered both vocations while growing up in southern Germany. Pope Benedict never expected to be much more than a priest and a university professor, but all that changed when he became Pope. Benedict made several international trips, including Germany, Australia, and Portugal, and was surprisingly well received by the crowds. Pope Benedict made the first state visit ever of a pontiff to the United Kingdom in 2010, with all the pomp that goes with it, including a meeting with the Queen. The Pope addressed dignitaries and politicians in Westminster Hall, a significant meeting in a significant location, the very place where, almost 500 years earlier, the Catholic St. Thomas More was condemned to death. Although he was nearly 85 at the time and had just begun to use a cane in public, in March 2012, Pope Benedict also traveled to Mexico, one of the largest Catholic countries in the world, and to Cuba. The church's activity has been severely curtailed in the island nation, and the Pope asked that Catholics at least be allowed to run their own schools there. In one of the most important decisions of his papacy, Benedict XVI put John Paul II on the fast track to sainthood, deciding that his predecessor should be declared blessed, the last step before he officially becomes a saint. It was his age and frail health that prompted a decision in 2013 for Benedict to step down as the leader of the worldwide Catholic Church move that shocked the Catholic faithful around the world as Pope Benedict XVI was the first head of the Roman Catholic Church to resign in almost 600 years. Greg Palcock, Fox News.